subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The Grand Canyon, one of the geological wonders of this planet, is a popular tourist destination in the US. It is known to be home to the Native Americans who are thought to have inhabited the area as far back as the 1200 BCE. However, the Grand Canyon is not only of interest to archaeologists who wish to learn about the ancient Native American cultures and origins, but is also of great interest to geologists. The Colorado River that flows through the Grand Canyon has, over the ages, cut open a slice of this time capsule. The different colored layers on the Grand Canyon can reveal Earth's ancient history dating back to 2 billion years ago. That's almost half of our planet's lifetime. But surprisingly, a chunk of this history seems to be missing from the Grand Canyon. A mysterious gap of time in the canyon's rock record that covers hundreds of millions of years has perplexed scientists for almost 150 years. In a new study, researchers have come closer to solving the mystery behind this missing piece of puzzle called the Great Unconformity. In this episode, I talk about how the Grand Canyon was formed, why it is of interest to geologists, and how they may be a step closer to finding the missing piece of Earth's history. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Barra Peak, graduate student in Geological Sciences at University of Colorado Boulder and lead author of this study, describes the reddish layers as the Earth's history textbook. If you scale down the canyon's rock faces, you can jump back almost 2 billion years into the planet's past. But why is the Grand Canyon like the Earth's history textbook? The formation of this natural wonder is a result of a combination of geological events. Almost 2 billion years ago, igneous and metamorphic rocks of the inner gorge of this canyon dates back to 2 billion years. Igneous rocks form when magma or molten rock cools and crystallizes. This may happen either at the volcano surfaces or while the melted rock is still inside the crust. Metamorphic rocks are formed when an existing rock is subjected to extreme temperatures or pressures leading to physical or chemical changes. Above these older igneous and metamorphic rocks lie several layers of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed by the accumulation or deposition of mineral or organic particles at the Earth's surface, which eventually settle and harden. Each of these layers of rocks have some information about the circumstances under which it was made. Now, about 70 to 30 million years ago, the whole region rose up as a result of plate tectonic movements. So the Earth now had a high and relatively flat Colorado Plateau. But about 5 to 6 million years ago, the Colorado River began to carve its way downward from the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. The water began to erode parts of the canyon, widening it into the steep gorge we see today. Still, today, these forces of nature are at work, slowly deepening and widening the Grand Canyon. As a result, we have a natural cross-section image of a record of billions of years of the Earth's history. But this so-called textbook has some missing pages. In some areas, more than 1 billion years worth of rocks have disappeared from the Grand Canyon without a trace. American geologist John Wesley Powell was the first to observe this great unconformity in 1869. It separates the Tonto group layers of sedimentary rocks from the underlying faulted and tilted sedimentary rocks of what is known as the Grand Canyon supergroup and vertically layered metamorphic and igneous rocks of the Vishnu basement rocks. 
Interestingly, the Vishnu basement rocks are named so because they resemble a Vishnu temple. In a research published in the journal Geology, which I will link in the description box below, the team reports that a series of small yet violent faulting events may have rocked the region during the breakup of an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia. The resulting havoc tore up the earth around the canyon, causing the rocks and sediment to wash away into the ocean. The team's findings could help scientists fill in missing pieces of what happened during this critical period for the Grand Canyon. The team used new analytical methods to decipher the history in the missing window of time. Powell first saw this great unconformity during a famed 1869 expedition by boat down the rapids of the Colorado River. The researchers from CU Boulder completed a similar research rafting trip through the Grand Canyon in spring of 2021 and said that the feature is stark enough that you can actually see it from the river. At the bottom, one can very clearly see that there are rocks that have been pushed together vertically. Then there is a cutoff above which there are characteristic horizontal layers associated with the Grand Canyon. The difference between the two types of rocks is significant. In the western part of the canyon, the basement stone is 1.4 to 1.8 billion years old. The rocks sitting on top, however, are just 520 million years old. Since Powell's voyage, scientists have seen evidence of similar periods of lost time at sites around North America. To explore the transition, the researchers employed a method called thermochronology, which tracks the history of heat in stone. When geologic formations are buried deep underground, the pressure building on top of them can cause them to heat up. This heat leaves a trace in the chemistry of minerals in those formations. Using this approach, the researchers conducted a survey of samples of rocks collected throughout the Grand Canyon. They discovered that the history of this feature may be more convoluted than scientists have assumed so far. In particular, the western half of the canyon and its eastern portion may have undergone different geological contortions throughout the time. So it is not a single block with the same temperature history as previously believed. Roughly 700 million years ago, basement rock in the west seems to have risen to the surface while in the eastern half, that same stone was under kilometers of sediment. The difference likely came down to the breakup of Rodinia, a gigantic landmass that began to pull apart at about the same time. The researcher's result suggests that this major upheaval may have torn at the eastern and western halves of the Grand Canyon in different ways and at slightly different times, producing the great unconformity in the process. The team is now looking at other sites of the Great Unconformity in North America to see if their theory holds elsewhere. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, you can now join The Print's YouTube membership to get special membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on the YouTube channel. You can do so through the link in the description below.